a fundamental phase of the presidential transition program, the investiture of national honors begins as President Muhammad Buhari, flanked by the president-elect and their spouses, join the vice president-elect, state governors, members of cabinet, and the diplomatic corps, among other dignitaries at the state house. Under Nigeria's seventh consecutive democratic transition, this is the first time the process is driven under an executive order. There is elation as the conferment of the National Honor of Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger, GCON, is first bestowed on the Vice President-elect, Senator Kashim Shatima. And government signed secondary school from 1980 to 1983. And then the award of Grand Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic is conferred on the President-elect, Senator Bola Tinubu. The chairman of the transition committee proceeds with the second component of the two-part ceremony, which is the formal handover of the transition documents. We indicated it and we stated what are the quick wins, what can be deferred for the future. So this is a comprehensive document you are receiving this afternoon. It's a combination of the effort of the President Muhammad Buhari administration aligned with your vision for Nigeria. The president-elect who will become Nigeria's 16th president to be awarded the GCFR is not oblivious of the task ahead. Whether you go to Dara or Nigeria or anywhere, <laughs> you expect knocks on your doors. We are determined in all sectors. We must make headway as if shattered the cause. The people deserve no less. You said so. I shall not disappoint you. President Buhari undoubtedly feels a sense of satisfaction as he underscores expectations. The challenges facing our nation are significant and it is the duty of the president and the vice president to address them with courage, wisdom, and compassion. It has been an honor and a privilege to serve this great nation. And I am confident that Nigeria is in capable hands as we embark on this new chapter. I have run a good race. I have finished my course. It is now... <laughs> It is now time for Anara to take up the button. Now the president, having handed over the three critical documents, have also passed on the information that the ministries, departments and agencies will also pass theirs on for a smooth takeover. The president is explicit about his conviction that Nigeria will certainly attain new heights under the Tinubu-led administration. From the presidential villa, Gloria Omezoke, Channels Television News. Thank you. The Vice President elect and his wife, Shetima, the Senate President, Senator. Ahmed Lawan, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Femi Bajabi the Honorable Chief Justice of Nigeria, Your Excellencies, my Lords, Governors, and all the political colleagues here present. Chief Busy Akade, the first interim 
somewhere. All the ministers, the honorable senators, it is a great honor for me to stand before you today. But let me first of all say thank you, Mr. President. I can only call you Mr. Democrat. You have bestowed the nation's highest honor on my first president elect, Shechi Mahami. Our deep thanks also for the transition documents which clearly enumerated the effort of the past eight years and year. The document summarizes the main work of your administration. They constitute an impressive and noteworthy scorecard. You have made history, and no one can deny your contribution to our national development. Your devotion to progressive and democratic governance is as able. I stand here today renewed in hope and dedication to our national greatness. I also feel full of pride that this moment is our moment, and I know what it represents. <laughs> this testly occasion has proved that Nigeria is vibrant and true democracy. It confirms that our democratic path is right. And is right, and nothing will deter us from sticking to it. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, we shall not be always smooth, yes. It's, democracy is rough and tumble, hills and valleys. Yet we are in boot with faith in our purpose and belief in our collective ability to overcome the challenges that confront us. President Boy, you have shown courage and taken tall decisions. <laughs> Others avoided. On such decision is to recognize the injust injustice of an amendment of 1993 election to designate June 12th as a democracy day and to bestow the nation's highest honor on late MK Abiola. As, any, as much as anyone could, you reach back into history to set the record straight and heal the festering wound. Thank you. <clears throat> the justice you did in this matter lent special meanings to today. The people have put their trust in us. You have done your part, Mr. President. Now, 
a great duty will descend on me. I understand the meaning of the honor given to me today and the magnitude of the tax that awaits. Whether you go to Dara or Nigeria or anywhere, <laughs> you expect knocks on your doors. <laughs> we are determined as enumerated on security, economy, agriculture, jobs, education, health, and power, and in all sectors. We must make headway as if charted the course. The people deserve no less. You said so. I shall not disappoint you. Thank you. Executive Governors here are present, members of the National Assembly, members of the Federal Executive Council, <laughs> members of the Diplomatic Corps, Service Chiefs, and Inspector General of Police, Heads of security and intelligence agencies, traditional rulers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is with great pleasure and a deep sense of pride that I stand before you today to confer national honors on the president elect and vice president elect, His Excellency Kashim Shetima. This ceremony marks a significant milestone in our nation's democratic journey as we inaugurate a new administration that will lead Nigeria towards greater progress and prosperity. I extend my warmest congratulations to the President-elect and his well-deserved victory at the February 25th, 2023 presidential election. The Nigerian people have recognized your leadership qualities, political acumen, and passion to serve our great nation, and have entrusted you with the burden of governing our beloved country. I have no doubt that Nigeria will continue to thrive and achieve new heights under your leadership. You are the best candidate at the elections, and Nigerians have chosen wisely. I equally extend my congratulations to the Vice President-elect. You are wealth of experience in governance. You are unwavering commitment to the well-being of the Nigerian people. And you are exemplary leadership. You are in challenging times as governor of Borno State has made you a deserving candidate for this position. <clears throat> I have conf full confidence that you will serve our nation with utter most dedication and integrity. In accordance with the Honours Award Act 1963, laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, presidents, heads of state, receive the honor of Grand Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, GCFR, while the vice presidents are awarded the Grand Commander 
of the Order of the Niger GCON. Today, with authority vested in me as President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I have conferred the national honors of GCFR on His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu and that of GCON on His Excellency Kashim Shetima, respectively. As we celebrate this auspicious occasion, let us not forget the immense responsibility that come with leadership. The challenges facing our nation are significant, and it is the duty of the President and the Vice President to address them with courage, wisdom, and compassion. We must remain committed to the principles of good governance, transparency, and accountability, as these are the foundations upon which our nation's progress and development relay. President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinibu, you have a long and illustrious track record of public service, marked by your exceptional achievements in various capacities. Your transformative leadership in Lagos State where you left an indelible mark in the areas of infrastructure, education, healthcare, and economic development, speak volumes about your dedication to the welfare of the Nigerian people. Your commitment to fostering unity, irrespective of ethnic or religious differences, is a testament to your statesmanship and visionary leadership. This administration from inception has faced security challenges such as insurgency, oil theft, kidnapping, as well as corruption, which has eaten deep into the system. With political will and support of many Nigerians, especially our Dajit Armed Forces, insurgency, terrorism, and kidnapping have been reduced to their barest minimum while corruption has been, has been tackled headlong. Despite the aforementioned challenges, our administration has made economic gains over the years. While acknowledging the turbulent times and global economic meltdown occasioned by world oil crisis and most recently the COVID-19 pandemic, our economy has remained afloat and strong. Our administration commitment and determination in infrastructural upliftment of Nigeria have remained unshaken. The second Niger Bridge has been completed and commissioned. I am happy to say that no administration in Nigeria, in Nigeria's modern history, has given so much attention to roads like we have done in the last eight years. In all, we have been able to construct and complete over 8,352.94 kilometers of roads across Nigeria. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, in spite of the shortfall in the federal government's revenue due to weakness in the global economy that has led to drop in oil revenue, we have touched on all sectors of the Nigerian economy positively. As we celebrate the monumental infrastructural strides achieved by this administration, it is pertinent to acknowledge that these transformative endeavors have not only reshaped our physical landscape, 
but have also paved the way for remarkable economic outcomes that reverberate across our nation. The link between infrastructure and economic prosperity is undeniable. It is through the construction of roads, railways, bridges, and other critical assets that we unlock the true potential of our nation, leading to better communication, facilitating trade, and propelling economic growth. To avoid a repeat of our 2015 experience, I signed Executive Order Number 14 of 2023, which establishes the legal framework for conducting presidential transitions at the federal level. The executive order establishes the Presidential Transition Council chaired by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation and ministerial transitional teams headed by the permanent secretaries. The primary responsibility of these two ad hoc bodies is to ensure that every piece of information that will help a new administration get off to a speedy start is made available in a usable format and in a timely manner. Today, I am, I am proud to have handed over to you, my successor, Your Excellency, Bola Ahmed Tinibu, three, three key documents that will guide you as you aim to define a path for your administration. It is my honest desire that you will find these documents useful, as this would be the first time in the history of this country that such a detailed documentation will be produced for handover to a new administration. I strongly encourage you to uphold this legacy and make experience even better for your successor by the time you, you are to leave office. It may also interest you to know that apart from these three documents, all the ministries and their agencies have also prepared their handover notes, ready to brief their new political leadership. I want to sincerely thank the Secretary to the Government of the Federation and his team for this great feat. We just witnessed the transfer of a button of service from me to President-elect Paula Ahmed Tinubu as part of a symbolic handover for him to continue with the race of advancing our democracy and development. <clears throat> this is a first in the history of our nation's transition process. To preserve this remarkable history for generations to come, I have directed that the baton be preserved in the presidential history wing of the National Archives. And I hope <laughs> that President Elak Tinibu and those after him will build on this tradition. I would like to now express my deepest gratitude to the Nigerian people for their unwavering support and trust throughout my tenure as president. It has, been, it has been an honor and a privilege to serve this great nation. And I am confident that Nigeria is in capable hands as we embark on this new chapter. I have run a good race. I have finished my course. It is now.
it is now time for Anara to take up the button. <laughs> Once again, I congratulate President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu and Vice President-elect Kashim Shatima on their well-deserved investiture. May the Almighty bless you and guide you in your endeavors to lead Nigeria towards a brighter and more prosperous future. Thank you. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria.